You are watching KVU 25 News Now at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Karina Garcia. President Biden announced early Sunday afternoon he will not seek re-election. In a letter posted on the social media app X, the president says he is stepping out of the race for the White House and will address the nation later this week. Biden called serving as president the greatest honor of his life, but he went on to say it was in the best interest of the Democratic Party and the country to stand down from the re-election re effort. Biden says his focus will be on fulfilling presidential duties for the remainder of his term. A senior campaign official reports that they were informed of the president's decision shortly before the letter went out and President Joe Biden now endorsing Vice President Kamala Harris to be the Democratic nominee for president. Biden in the post saying his first decision as the party nominee back in 2020 was to pick Harris as his vice president and that it's the best decision he's made. He ends the post urging Democrats to come together and quote beat Trump. Let's do this unquote. Now, the Trump campaign already responding to Biden's decision to step aside, his team preparing for Harris to become the Democratic nominee and releasing a campaign ad attacking Harris record on immigration and border security. Donald Trump's response to Joe Biden's historic decision to bow out of the race tonight, attack, attack, attack. Trump, who just days ago pledged to unify the country, blasting Biden as the worst president by far in the history of our nation, adding whoever the left puts up now will just be more of the same. It was just over said, a week ago after the attempt happened. on Trump's life <laughs> that Trump and Biden shared what both men described as a good, respectful chat, Biden calling his rival. I spoke with him last night. I'm grateful. He's doing well, and Jill and I keep him and his family in our prayers. Tonight, Trump declaring Biden was not fit to run for president and is certainly not fit to serve. And now some of the nation's top Republicans following Trump's lead, calling on Biden to resign from office. House Speaker Mike Johnson saying if Joe Biden is not fit to run for president, he is not fit to serve as president. He must resign the office immediately. The Trump campaign now having to shift course, though they've been preparing for weeks. We Trump polling the crowd in Michigan yesterday. So who would you like to most run against if you're us, if we want to win. Ready? Kamala Harris. Crooked Joe Biden. All right. I don't think we have to go too much further. And tonight, Trump's running mate, Senator J.D. Vance, bluntly saying, Joe Biden has been the worst president in my lifetime, and Kamala Harris has been right there with him every step of the way. She owns all of these failures. So here is your beer poll tonight. You can scan that QR code right there on your screen to vote. The question is, do you support Biden dropping out of the race? According to our results tonight, it looks like 81% stand at yes, and the remaining 19% stand at no. Thank you for voting tonight. Now, independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is reacting to President Biden's decision to drop out of the race. Kennedy spoke with reporters in Massachusetts today. He praised the president's decision and then reflected on Biden's years in public service. I want to begin by commending President Biden for a career in public service, for a long, long career in representing and serving our country and for his handling of the many difficulties and challenges, personal challenges and tragedies that he suffered during his life uh, with so much admirable conduct and the empathy. Kennedy is not dropping his own presidential bid. He urged Democrats to use an open process to choose Biden's successor instead of having party leaders anoint a candidate. He suggested Democrats use neutral polling to identify the candidate who can best beat Donald Trump. Now, over in Texas, Governor Greg Abbott taking to X this afternoon, saying Biden's endorsement of Kamala Harris only further pushes his efforts to, quote, triple the border wall, razor wire barriers, and National Guard at the southern border. And with that, it's time to talk weather on this Sunday night. So let's check in with First Warren Storm Team meteorologist Trey Mining. All right, good evening, everyone. And temperature on the outside, 79 degrees at the humidity factor in. Feels like 83 degrees on the outside. Had a pretty good round of thunderstorms earlier this afternoon, especially north of Victoria over to about Edna Inez area and points to the south there in the Calhoun County. And nothing going on there out there now, currently. Here's a review of the day. 95 degrees with a daytime high. 
low 73 degrees, pretty much on target where we should be for our normal low and high. And nowhere near a record high in the state back in 1939 at 101 degrees. Thank you for that because the cloud cover we're anticipating. Rain chances too, and some of that could be on the heavy side. We'll take a look at that coming up in the full forecast. Karina? Trey, thank you. The Justice Department is suing the largest housing provider for unaccompanied migrant children, claiming children in their care have been repeatedly harassed and sexually abused. The DOJ reports employees of Southwest Key, based in Austin, have raped, touched, or solicited sex and nude photos of children since at least 2015. Southwest Key has 29 child migrant shelters in three states, including Texas, Arizona, and California. The lawsuit states an employee repeatedly sexually abused abused three girls ages 5, 8, and 11 at the Casa Franklin Center in El Paso. It also reports an employee working at a shelter in Arizona took an 11-year-old boy to a hotel and paid him to perform sexual acts for several days. At least two employees are not charged since 2020. Now, a somber remembrance in Aurora, Colorado on Saturday. 12 years ago, a gunman opened fire in a movie theater and killed 12 people, including an unborn baby. Now, a survivor recalls those moments. I was going to check what time it was. July 20th, a day when time stands still. 11.38. Every minute filled with heartache and hope. People are coming together and supporting each other. A place where Nikki Lyons feels comfortable sharing her story. You, how are you connected? So I was in Auditorium 8 when the bullets went through the wall. And uh, I lost my friend A.J. Blake next door in Auditorium 9 where the shooter was. A memory from the past that still haunts her in the present. We have people here who come every year to remember our 13 loved ones. Nikki is one of those people. I'm just trying to find AJ Stone. It's been 12 years since Nikki lost her friend. It's just a little hard to see in the dark. <laughs> and every day this garden brings a little light. I found it. It's over here. And a bit of healing. I'm fine. That shooting ripped apart many families. One of the victims, Ashley Moser, suffered an unspeakable loss that day. The shooting left her paralyzed, and she was pregnant at the time and lost her baby. Her six-year-old daughter, Veronica, also died in that shooting. She was the youngest victim. Police are investigating a mass shooting in Philadelphia. It happened early Sunday morning in the western section of that city. The shooting left three people dead and six others injured. Investigators say the gunfire happened at a large gathering and they believe multiple shooters were involved. The gunfire also struck several parked vehicles. Police say they recovered one gun from the scene and they are still looking for the person responsible. Nearly two weeks after Hurricane Barrel slammed into the Houston, the Centerpoint Energy Company says it has restored electricity to all of its customers. More than two million customers lost power at the peak of the Category 1 storm, which made landfall on July 8th. There are still a couple of thousand people who did not have power Saturday morning. However, the company says those outages could be for customers who had severe damage to their homes and are unable to receive power. At least 22 deaths have been reported in the wake of Hurricane Barrel. Alrighty, grab your cell phone and scan this QR code. This is our quick response code to download the Crossroads Today app. Watch us anytime, anywhere, and get breaking news alerts and vote in all our viewer polls. Learn all about our ongoing contest right there on the app. You can also submit news tips, videos, and photos. Now remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click that notification bell. For now, stay with us. Scammers are promoting fake recovery websites following that global tech mech meltdown that's coming up. Thunderstorms earlier today have gone away, quiet on the outside now, but it's not staying that way. It's going to be a pretty active week around here. We'll give you the details coming up in the full forecast. A 72-year-old man is recovering after being attacked by a grizzly bear. It happened Thursday evening near Columbia Falls, Montana. Wildlife officials say the man was picking huckleberries and Flathead National Forest when the bear charged him. The man shot and killed the bear with a handgun. Officials say most bears only attack to protect their cubs, territory, or food, and they're checking to see if there were any cubs in the nearby area. Incidentally, huckleberries make up a significant part of wild bears' diet in Montana.
The fallout from Friday's global tech outage continued into Saturday. While businesses are slowly getting back online, a full recovery could take days and even weeks. Don't rely on inbound calls. Don't rely on emails and all the things which are known uh, by scam artists. To, to Former Homeland Security National Cybersecurity Director Amit Yoran raising the red flag about cyber criminals already capitalizing on the chaos from Friday's massive global tech outage. Cyber experts and the government say in the wake of the outage, scammers are promoting fake recovery websites with malicious software to take advantage of unsuspecting victims. Miscreants are looking through uh, this software, looking for problems which they can then deploy globally. Even as restorations continue across multiple industries, the fallout from Friday's global outage persisted into the weekend. Thousands of flights had been canceled or delayed Saturday, with more than 600 of those cancellations coming from Delta alone. Many passengers still waiting after more than a day. In addition to airports, businesses, hospitals, and more are still reeling from the outage. As for how long a full recovery will take, experts say it won't be a quick fix. This is not an issue uh, that's going to be with us forever, but it's not an issue that's going away in, in, in 10 hours or even two days. I'm Reed Binion reporting. This year's Amazon Prime Day event hit record numbers. Between July 16th and 17th, shoppers spent $14.2 billion during the online sale event. Adobe Analytics reports an 11% boost in sales from last year. Amazon has yet to release its sales figure, but says that this is its biggest Prime Day ever, with more items sold than any previous Prime Day. The online retailer reports in weeks leading up to the event, millions of shoppers joined Amazon Prime. Now for more on today's Today's news stories come to CrossroadsToday.com and don't forget to submit your birthday wishes so Sunrise anchor Carolina Astrain and meteorologist Parker Cox can read them live on 25 News Now Sunrise. You can also submit a local military hero so we may recognize them. And take a look at this. Temperatures for daytime highs tomorrow probably more than likely not getting out of the 80s all week long. Why? Because the cloud cover and rainfall will be plentiful around here. We'll talk about that coming up next in your forecast. Being in the upper 70s near 80 degrees, this is the feel like temperature. Got the moisture flowing in, and that's important to keep uh, humidity in line and moisture for storms to, in the future to feed off of and grow in, in size and intensity. And the feel like temperature, well, even though we'll have mostly cloudy skies tomorrow and scattered rain showers and thunderstorms, it still feel like 100 degrees coming up by 11 o'clock in the morning time, and even more than that, 103 or so by 2 o'clock or so, or so. So even though we have the cloud cover in place, we forecast that to happen. You still need to be careful out there because it's definitely going to be on the hot side. And here's something that is pleasing to everybody so far. It is quiet in the tropics. This is the whole Atlantic Basin here, all the way from the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean Sea, way out here into the uh, tropical Atlantic. Here's the coast of Africa here. Not anything organized at all, pretty much as clear as it can get. Now we have a few rain showers and storms in the Gulf of Mexico, nothing organized, not anything like that, not looking for any low pressure areas to form or anything, but just area of moisture or tropical wave, if you will, is headed toward the Texas coast. It's going to combine with the weak front we have over the region here. That will keep the thunderstorm chances in pretty high uh, uh, likelihood coming up for the next several days down the road. So better get the, used to that, get that umbrella and dust it off because you're definitely going to be needing it for the next several days. Let's take a look at the future rain totals here. This is just one rain model as we go through the rest of the day on Monday. More than likely, the amounts at that time will be one inch or a little bit less than that. And we begin to build up on the day Tuesday and Wednesday. Take a look at this. Go all the way up to about several inches, three or four, as we hit toward the Wednesday time frame. Rain still continues to fall after that point, running through your day on Thursday and even into your Friday. So a good soaking area-wide, more than likely. And with some of this coming down rather quickly, so the threat of flooding is certainly alive for our, our area here, especially areas that are known to flood, like low water crossings and creek beds and what have you. That'd be the first to flood. So be weather aware as you're traveling about and going around your normal routine throughout this upcoming week. Mostly cloudy on the outside tonight, not seeing any precipitation at all, maybe a few rain showers along the immediate coast as we get the daytime heating going and the sea breeze going early in the morning time. And they'll be expanding as their way inland to head toward the rest of the afternoon and another pretty rainy day for your day tomorrow. Nothing severe, not anything looking like that, but the threat we're looking for is for, uh, some potential flooding and heavy rainfall. Quarrel, well, Waking up time tomorrow, we'll be in the low 80s and near 90 degrees with the daytime high coming up for your day tomorrow with thunderstorm chances very likely. Same thing in Port Lavaca with high temperatures in the 80s there with storms in the morning time, probably along the coast, working their way into Calhoun County or in the morning time. And for Victoria, same goes for us. 
a few peaks of sunshine here and there. Otherwise, cloudy skies, thunderstorm chances coming up our, our way here. That's going to be alive for the next several days. Alert days, take a look at that for the next several days, beginning on Tuesday where the flooding potential is there. So be weather aware with that. Only a very slow reduction in rain chances coming up by Saturday and Sunday. So keep your umbrella handy, watch weather developments, and be careful out there. Take a look at this right here. This is the QR code. Get your smartphone, scan the code you see right there. That will take you to a web page. You can download our app and be connected with us, news, weather, and sports. All at your fingertips, very easy, convenient, free of charge to be connected with us on your way out and on the go wherever you are going. Now it's time for sports with Ray. Thank you, Trey. Coming up on 25 News Now Sports, we have local sport organizations in full force and premier prospects being featured and hosting a big tournament. Stay tuned. Experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus, stream our daily newscast, and much more using your connected TV. Just download Crossroads Today Plus on your Roku, Amazon, Fire TV, Apple TV, or Android TV. Just search Crossroads Today Plus. And new details about an incredible story of survival for an elderly woman with dementia who went missing on a Utah mountainside. An 8-year-old woman went for a short walk with her chocolate Labrador while her husband was cooking dinner, but she never returned. Authorities were called and police started looking for her, but that's when a conservation officer credits the woman's dog with helping searchers find the woman. His barking eventually led rescuers to her and she spent two nights and three days outside before she was finally rescued. What an incredible story. I tell you what, dogs, animals like that have a sense of uh, things that are not right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they can, they can alert. Two nights, an 80 year old woman with dementia and wow. that's why they say a dog is a man's best friend for stories. Woman. Exactly. Best friend. A woman's best friend in this case. <laughs> Yes, that's right. But over to our weather side, you do have our hurricane tracker here. Pretty uh, handy. Exactly. Very handy because the, the peak of the season is coming up in August and September. So it's time to get ready for that. So get our hurricane tracking charts. They're located here at uh, come some of the places you can get them as, at Fula Pep and Quero, El Campo Cycle Center and Palace Bingo. Pick one up today and get ready. Quick look at the forecast for us right here. Wet week. All week long. Heavy rainfall potentially in some areas. So there could be some localized flooding. We're, could be uh, looking at. That's why the alert days are there Tuesday through Friday. So be weather aware, stay safe out there, of course, carry umbrella and take it slow on your way to work or f going home from work, whatever you're doing, because you don't want to get to an accident or anything like that with water on the roadways. And lows in the 70s overall. So what week ahead? We get a break from that heat. That's the plus. Yeah, that's yeah, the plus. There's, there's a plus and minus to everything. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you, Trey, and thank you, Ray, and thank you for being with us. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Have a good night. <laughs>